I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April board meeting. Uh, please, can I get a motion to open the meeting? Second, Second please. Second. All in favor? Second. Okay, I would like to invite our student reporters up. My name is Aid De Morgan. I'm a senior at Melbourne High School. I transferred my junior year, and this school has given me so many opportunities to go a as a student, as an athlete, and as a future member of society. One of these ways is through the baseball program. The program has been more than just a sports team. It's been a gateway to numerous opportunities for personal growth, skill development, and unforgettable experiences. The program's commitment to excellence, coupled with the supporters, with the support of coaches of Coach. Barbieri and Coach Zambito has provided me with a platform to thrive both on and off the field. Under the guidance of experienced coaches, I've had the privilege of refining my abilities in batting, pitching, fielding, and overall game strategy. Through countless hours of practice and dedication, I've witnessed significant improvements in my, in my performance, transferring me into a more well-rounded and confident athlete. Some of my most cherished memories from Malvern are rooted in my experiences with the baseball program. From victories on the field to bonding moments during team dinners and bus trips, each season has been filled with unforgettable moments that have shaped me to the person I am today. Whether celebrating our three consecutive championship wins, but who's counting, or overcoming adversity with resilience and perseverance, the journey with baseball has taught me invaluable life lessons that extend far beyond the realm of sports. These experiences have instilled in me a sense of pride, belonging, and gratitude for the opportunities afforded to me by the program. As I prepare to embark on the next chapter of my life, I'm grateful for the invaluable lessons learned and the lifelong friendships forged through my involvement with Malvern High School Baseball. I'm confident that the skills, values, and memories gained from this program will continue to guide me towards success in all my future endeavors. Come down to our beautiful field, come down to our beautiful field for our next home game, April 16th at 5 p.m. Go Mules! Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Brown and I'm a junior here at Malvern High School. First, I just want to say thank you to the board and everyone at home watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and without it we wouldn't be able to accomplish as much as we do. As you can see, I just got back from a softball game. We won 15-14 against Hewlett, putting us at four wins total for this season. Thanks. Our next home game is next Wednesday, April 17th at 5 p.m. against Uniondale. Everyone is welcome to come support. I'm also a member of the Service Learning Club, which focuses on achieving long-term goals through community service. This past January, we attended the Molloy College Day of Service honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. At this event, we were exposed to a multitude of community service ideas from external organizations such as the Bethany House and Book Fairies, who taught us ways that we could help outside of our local community. We also took workshops. My personal favorite was the CPR workshop, which taught us basic CPR as well as how to use an AED in the case of an emergency. Learning these skills was so special because they could literally save someone's life by keeping their heart beating until emergency services arrive. After this amazing experience at Malloy, the Service Learning Club is looking to implement our own MLK Day of Service next school year on January 20th, 2025. Our club will plan interactive workshops for the elementary and middle schoolers, honing in on aspects of the portrait of a graduate and a series of charitable activities. The Day of Service is also going to celebrate the anniversary of Dr. King's visit to Malvern during the Civil Rights Movement. We hope to see you there. I am also ecstatic to be able to say that I was recently awarded with the Princeton Prize in Race Relations from Princeton University. As many of you know, Malvern School District and the surrounding communities had been working for years to rename Linner Place, the street that Morris W. Downing resides on, because it was named after Ku Klux Klan le leader, Paul Linner. My involvement with this project included speaking at multiple town hall meetings and rallying my fellow students for this cause. I also wrote a research paper detailing the gruesome crimes Linner committed throughout his life, which was the final push for the village board to vote unanimously, unanimously to rename the street. For my work, I was nominated for and won the Princeton Prize. I will be attending a symposium at Princeton University over spring break where I will meet the other prize winners and talk about our projects as well as how we can continue to improve diversity and equity within our communities. Thank you for having me and good night.
I'm so glad you came to, to, to share that, because Olivia, because I was going to mention that to the audience. I'm so proud of that um, award. That's Princeton University. I hope that you're applying to Princeton, because that's, that's a, a leg up on, on that. Um, the students who, who get into that particular, um, pri win that particular prize are really wor worth knowing and sharing with and I think you're going to have a wonderful time. I know it's your spring break, but you're going to come back transformed because there are going to be many other students like you from around the country that will be convening on the Princeton University campus. And uh, for uh, the gentleman who spoke so eloquently about the baseball, I'm so happy that you came to us in your junior year, and I look forward to your graduation. Um, and uh, seeing you walk that stage. We are very proud to have you. Go Mules. Could I please get a motion to accept the March 12th, 2024 board meeting minutes, please? Second, please. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Chris, could I please have the treasurer's report? The February 2024 treasurer's report was provided to the board last week. And the board members have questions on February's report, they can ask now or at a later time. Does anyone have any questions? Can I please get a motion to accept the treasurer's report, please? Second, please. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, the financial reports, please. The monthly financial reports for February 2024 were provided to the board last week as well. If any of the board members have questions on any of the various February reports, they can ask now or at a later time. Any questions? Can I please get a motion to accept the receipts of financial reports? <laughs> Second, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Um, Dr. Rulis? Much. Uh, I'll begin with just thanking everyone who participated in STEM night. It was a wonderful event. Um, some of the teachers I see here in the audience um, who participated, um, parents came. Um, at bringing their young children, and I think that evening was so well attended, and um, I think it did a lot to raise uh, the interest of science, although this whole week has done a lot to raise the interest of science, from starting out with the earthquake, yes, we had an earthquake, 4.8, uh, and, um, and then uh, following up with the eclipse, so it's been really a, a, a week for those, uh, even though I never said earth science was a science, but I, ha I guess I have to acknowledge it now. Um, the, um, for the way that the earth science teachers embraced it and helped our students understand the, the various phenomena occurring. Uh, they took advantage of um, the earthquake. I know at, over at Herbert they did a whole thing on the earthquakes, and then on the day of the eclipse when we took the kids out um, everyone in the bil in the district received their glasses. Some of the staff members who were interested also participated and, and had their glasses. Um, at Downing, we did not give out. We gave out the glasses for the uh, for the kids to take home, and some of the parents did pick up their children so that they could use that during the eclipse. But you gotta you gotta be in awe of nature uh, with what happened this this past week from the earthquake on to watching totality and watching, being a part of that, and recognizing that you are part, you're part of a global community. That's what I felt, that you know, you know, what was happening in Dallas, and then it just kept moving on. And then you realize that you're part of a global entity, that we're not alone in this world, that we need to care for each other and care for that global citizenship that we talk about in the portrait of a graduate. So I just am in awe of nature and I'm in awe of the fact that our teachers really have nurtured our students to understand what was happening. So I thank them for doing that. We're about to engage on something that I'm excited about, which is strategic planning. Uh, we need to look at where we are, take a deep dive in where we are, and where do we want to be five years from now. So we're going to engage in a Forward 2030 event uh, beginning on May 20th. I'm going to invite community members. I'm going to invite staff. 
I'm going to invite anyone in who's listening to be here on May 20th if you want to be part of the Strategic Planning Committee. The board members will be there, administrators will be there, parents are going to be there, the PTA, the SAC Committee, uh, Superintendent's Advisory Committee are going to be our anchor for this. And May 20th, I would love to have everyone convene. Just register with my office and let me know that you're coming because we really want to discuss what is it that we appreciate about Malvern, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, where are our opportunities for growth, and what are our threats for greatness? What are the things that are preventing us from getting to where we want to be, um, having our Life Ready graduates um, accomplishing what they need to do? So I invite everyone who is interested to be a part of this. Um, it's, it's about five different sessions, but you don't have to be at all five. I would love for you to be at all five. But what we want to do is we want to land on a plan that in, involves everyone. Now, you can be involved virtually by being on the thought exchange. So we are going to be launching several thought exchanges. We have already launched one. And then, but coming in and interacting uh, using a World Cafe model, uh, interacting with everyone, parents, community members, I've invited people who are, don't have children in school, I've reached out to alumni, I really want us to think about where, what does Malvern look like five years from now? Our mission and vision hasn't changed for a while. Is it, does it still suit our, what we want? It might be that it's perfect and we don't have to touch it, but does it still fit where we are? Does it still allow us to do the kinds of things that we want to do? So if you're interested, please call my office. If you're on the SAC committee, if you're on the PTA executive boards, you're already part of the movement. I'm gonna invite people to come and just experience the discussion and be a part of setting the, uh, the uh, stage for Forward 2030. Um, Pre-K update, good news. Yes, Dr. Lewis, thank you. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Pre-K program. This is our second year running the Universal Pre-K. The 24-25 school year will mark that second anniversary. And we did have the closing of our lottery process uh, as of yesterday at three o'clock. I'm happy to announce there are spots still available so we will not have to hold a lottery for the next school year. Uh, two things will happen on Friday. One, the people that signed up for the lottery will now have the chance to formally register for the UPK program. And we'll also be sending out uh, correspondence on our website for people that are still interested in signing up. There are still spots available. So information about how to sign up will be available as of Friday. So again, two things. The people that are currently registered for the lottery will receive the registration information, be allowed to fully register. And those who have not yet uh, either they don't know about the program or they didn't have a chance to register for the lottery, we'll now have that opportunity to reach out. Uh, so we're excited about it, and thank you for the opportunity. Great. It, listen, that's the students who are currently at Tudor Time, we have 40 students there. They're part of class of 2037. We have been visiting them. We kind of get, gotten to know some of them. They're wonderful children. They are reading, writing, and learning uh, at a rate that has impressed us. We are going to um, be doing kindergarten roundup there for those 40 students. So that's already 40 students that will be in our pool, um, in addition to those kindergarten roundups that are not at, in our pre-K program that we'll be doing here. So we're trying to have as many students participate in that kindergarten roundup ahead of time, so our placement decisions and getting ready for um, the class of 2037 when they enter our schools, better prepared um, uh, for them, um, getting to know them and what their, um, what their skill gaps might be or strengths might be. So uh, we're gonna be much better. And then the class of 2038, think about that, class of 2038 is about to enter pre-K next year. Those are our fourth graders, 2038. Oh my goodness. Uh, they might see the other eclipse. <laughs> they might be there for the other eclipse. Here, we better keep the, some of those glasses because we might not be able to afford them next. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I hope not. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm just excited. Some of these kids are so delicious. 
they are wonderful and um, happy to have them. Budget adoption. Oh, before you go on, today we have a, a few um, teachers and students who are visiting are, are in Broadway and, uh, to see um, Jordan um, Tyson, a class of 2015. Uh, she's starring in The Notebook as Young Allie. I've seen it. it. Believe me, bring tissues. It's wonderful. And I know, I know um, Sandy, wrong killer. Sandy saw it. It's a tissue evening. But also, CBS covered her today. I think I sent it out. See, she was on CBS, and she gave a shout out to Malvern her school that prepared her for this. So shout out to Ken Zagari and all of those teachers who she mentioned on the CBS piece. So I think I'll send that out to the staff so that they can see that uh, CBS um, piece. That was, she had a full session on CBS with the other, uh, with um, who's the guy? Ali's guy. Um, <laughs> I, why did it slip me? The guy she goes, uh, she goes all crazy for. Um, Sandy, what's his name? Noah. Noah, right. How could I forget? Noah. Um, so Noah is on, and just her, Allie, was, was on for a good, st I'll, I'll send it out to PTA, so you'll, you'll also get that. But we're just so proud. I mean, class of 2015, homegrown, as I always say, homegrown, and it all happened here. Um, also, mark your calendars for August 16th with a rain date of August 17th. We are going to have theater outside, summer theater, and, and I'm sure formal uh, announcements will be made as to what the show is. So August 16th and rain day August 17th. The alumni will be here. The Alumni Foundation, by the way, is up and running. They just got their, um, their number from the state. They're now a, a formerly a 501c3, and um, they're beginning their activities and they will be here. Um, they will be here for homecoming. They're planning on being here for the, um, the award ceremony for uh, the seniors, because I think they're going to um, give a check. They also supported, um, they gave a $1,500 donation to the students who, um, to support the students who went to Washington, D.C., because it was a cost to the district. Those young ladies who went to Washington, D.C., who were advocates, uh, met with legislators, presented so nicely. Um, um, they, they helped to offset the costs of that trip. So it helps to have a strong alumni foundation. I know there are parents sitting in the audience who I know are, uh, have alumni. Um, when they're young, they may not be able to give money, but we've got class of 63. We've got many class of 79s, 71s, 73s, and they have money. And they are willing to, they love their time at Malvern. They really did. Lisa was class of 83, correct? 87. Oh, 87. That, those are the people that we are targeting because they still, they still love their experience. Class of 71, class of 70, they are amazingly fond of their time here. And that's the whole idea, um, to connect with them. And so they've started this foundation. Look for things to come. Let's support them, because they're going to turn around and support our district. So that's, that's all, folks. OK, budget. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight is the annual budget adoption. Uh, we're going through our annual budget <coughs> presentation for the annual adoption. We're starting with the portrait of a graduate. Uh, civically engaged, culturally responsive, digitally fluent, resilient, ethical, collaborative, and innovative. All are portraits of a graduate for our Life Ready students. Looking at the proposed budget uh, for next school year, it maintains a rigorous academic program to ensure Life Ready graduates, supports a sound K-12 literacy program, supports the social and emotional well-being of our learning community, provides for co-curricular and athletic activities, and maintains a priority of safety and the maintenance of our aging f facilities and grounds, and lastly, employs fiscal prudence in maintaining the tax levy below the annual state tax cap. 
when we're developing the budget annually, there are a number of puzzle pieces that need to be uh, put in place and navigated through, including inflation and unfunded mandates, state aid, the community's ability to pay in difficult economic times, maintenance of the, our old and aging facilities, contractual obligations, and distinguishing features of a Malvern education. So these are just uh, some of the major puzzle pieces that uh, we have to look at annually. Looking at the tax levy, as I mentioned, the proposed tax levy will be less than the allowable amount as per the tax cap formula per New York State. Uh, the district is proposing a 2% annual tax levy increase. Looking at the revenue as a whole, uh, there are four main uh, types of revenue. The first is district generated and more miscellaneous. Uh, that's an annual change of just over $390,000. Uh, use of fund balance and reserves will be increasing approximately $573,000, followed by state aid with an increase of $624,000. And again, the tax levy annual increase of 2%, which equates to a $956,000 annual increase for an overall budget to budget of 3.71%. <coughs> um, as I stated on the last slide, uh, just to further pull it, break it down and pull it out, that we are using fund balance and reserves to fund the next school year's budget. Uh, the district will be committing over 1.2 million, which is inclusive of appropriated fund balance of 80,000 and uh, use of reserves for just over $1.1 million. Well, that was the revenue picture. Now looking on the spending side, uh, there are six main categories of spending. Uh, instructional piece of the, sp of the pie is about 60% of total spending, followed by benefits at 20%. General support is 10%, followed by transportation just over 6%. Uh, the debt service is 3.7%, and then lastly, the interfund transfer is about 0.44% of total spending for next school year. There will be two propositions on this year's ballot. Uh, proposition one is related to the annual budget. Proposition two is related to capital reserve fund expenditure of $1.7 million. And Mr. Bozan will go into a little more detail of each of the items proposed. Thank you, Mr. Caputo. And as Chris mentioned, um, I am talking tonight about the proposition number two. And I just want to remind the community that this proposition two comes at no additional cost to the taxpayer. This is monies that are surplus from the previous year that are now rolling into the proposition two. And we've earmarked several projects, uh, the biggest of which is the HEH auditorium and bathroom upgrades. We're looking to upgrade the bathrooms at both elementaries, continue with our drop ceiling project at the high school complete our district-wide door upgrades, and lastly, upgrade our aging grounds and maintenance vehicles. Here you'll see a picture of the HTH auditorium. This is gonna take the lion's share of that proposition number two. Uh, this auditorium is about 30 years old, and if you recall, the Malvern uh, Movie Theater actually donated those seats. So uh, we wanna update this space, get it to the Malvern blue and orange, as well as the two bathrooms in the vestibule. Next, we're focusing our attention on the remaining bathrooms at both Davison and Downing, looking to upgrade those two spaces. And we wanna continue our drop ceiling project at Malvern High School. We started a door initiative a few years back. We're coming to the final phase of that, so we're looking to finish that project with this Proposition 2 monies. Lastly, our grounds and maintenance vehicles have aged over the years, so we want to update our fleet uh, so we can reduce our spending on maintenance items. In addition to the Proposition 2, we also have a capital outlay project. Uh, this is phase three of which we were attacking the high school parking lot. Uh, two years ago, we did one phase. This year, we're doing another. And for next year, we'd like to allocate 115000 toward the final uh, section of the parking lot for the Malvern High School. Should Proposition 1 or the annual budget vote fail in May, uh, the Board of Education and the district would have three choices at that point. The first would be to resubmit the defeated budget in June. Uh, second, the board could choose to revise the budget lower and submit that to the voters in June. And lastly, the Board of Education, should the May vote not pass, the board could go right and adopt a contingent budget. A contingent budget will require a 0% tax levy increase, which would require the district to remove $956,456 from tonight's proposed budget. Looking ahead, uh, there are a couple of PTA meetings in April and May, April 11th, May 7th, and May 9th that Central Administration will attend to go through more detail 
and budget review with the, with the PTA meeting, so we encourage everyone to join us there. May 14th is the annual budget hearing, and then again, May 21st is the annual budget vote. Uh, lastly, besides the Proposition 1 and 2, there also is the annual board candidate election uh, running for the seat currently occupied by Ms. Jean D'Esposito for a four-year term. Uh, again, a reminder, uh, May 21st, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. As always, the uh, polling will take place at the middle school auditorium. And we encourage everyone to come out um, to vote to support the, the budget and the funding for not only our um, outgoing kids and our seniors who are coming up to graduation, but for our kindergarten and pre-kindergarten students as well. Thank you. Just one more thing. On May 2nd, the PTA will be having their Founders Day dinner. If you haven't received that information, you can contact any of the buildings. They have that information. We'd like to support them in honoring the people who work so hard in that organization to support our schools. So May 2nd is Founders Day. Okay, at this time we would like to open public participation if there is anyone in the audience that would like to come up. Oh, oh sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. My mistake. Okay, could I please get a motion to accept the consent agenda? 10 A to E, 11, 12 A to S, 13 and 14. So moved. Second, please. So moved. All in favor? Can I please now get a motion to approve the consent agenda? 10 A to E, 11, 12 A to S, 13 and 14. So Second, please. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Now I would like to open public participation. Kay. Is there anyone in the audience who wanted to come up? Good evening, Anjanette Hartley, um, 490 White Star Avenue, West Hempstead, 11552. I just want to say hi to everyone. I haven't seen some of you in a while, so I just want to say hi. Good evening, Dr. Lewis. Hi. Um, I just want to also say the the back parking lot in the mornings is is running much smoother, and I just want to say that's really appreciated. Um, also on Pine Brook, where they were having all that traffic, where the, where the buses were parking. I just want to say that that is appreciated. And um, I just wanted to ask you about the track. On w Is there an update as far as them doing sure. the repairs on the track? Hi, Ms. Hartley. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for the two compliments at Malvern High School. Yeah, so the track uh, was done last year. It was done by Lantech. There were some issues, uh, small issues, with maintenance. Uh, we were waiting for the temperatures to be above 55. We're now getting into that territory, so we're going to be making those repairs in time. Thank you. Okay. Um, of course, my son is graduating. I know you all are going to miss me, but I, I will still be around. <laughs> still in the neighborhood. So, which brings me to a graduation question. Um, I mean, we're not looking for rain on that particular day, but last year it was kind of like, uh, disaster having everyone fit into uh, the gym. So I was just wondering, is there any way or would that really affect the budget if we just already prepare with tents, um, like, you know, ahead of time, like rain or shine, just have the tents? Would that be a problem for us to do that for the graduation class for 2024? Don't everybody I, speak at once. Well, I, I'll <laughs> take it. I, I know you didn't think the graduation was it, great inside, but I'm telling you from a parent's perspective, yes. the picture taking mm -hmm. and the ability to see the graduates right there because they were facing the right. audience, yes. there were a lot of people who like it that way. Okay. So, you know, okay. um, so... Yes, it was, you know, for next year's class might be a problem because it's 185 kids. Right. But for this year's class, if it rained, we could accommodate it. And to think about having 
to accommodate every single person that's on the stands with um, tents, mm -hmm. I don't think we have the capacity okay. to do that. Okay. So being inside, you as a parent with child graduating, you had better pictures. You saw them. Mm -hmm. um, the performances were, it was very, we were close, but, um, but it was very intimate. It was very intimate. And so what we will do is try to plan better for overflow so okay. that we might be able to stream it in here for overflow, which is what happens at a lot of graduations. Yes. You yes. plan for the overflow. I'm but um, I, I don't think we could have tents large enough to, uh, to accommodate the people okay. in the stands. It's not just the graduates, mm -hmm. but the people in the stands. We couldn't do that. Okay. So I appreciate that. Just clarity, when you've seen it from one side, it helps to bring it. Yeah, a lot of people guys, liked so it that way. The pictures were much better. Okay, I M appreciate you bringing that. Ms. Hartley, when we did my older child's graduation in 2020 for COVID, we had tents, and we had to do three graduations. Well, I remember. So I yeah. So did I. My son yeah, was there Yeah, so well. it, and it was full for each one, so right. I can't even imagine how mm -hmm. difficult it would be to fit the entire grade plus guests. So. All right. I appreciate the clarity. That's that's why we're here, right? For clarity. So I appreciate that. Um, I just want to bring up again in the past with the parade. I hope that's something that goes on for next year. I will be, of course, in the neighborhood. I am still going to be participating and be the loud person at the special games and things like that. But I'm hoping we could then also do the parade coming from the entrance. Um, Lakeview is known as because because of the traffic and the overflow on Ocean Avenue. I just thought that was a great idea that was on my mind to say it. And again, um, Dr. Lewis, that was a very good idea to do that. And um, the college students that were committed to colleges, um, I was just wondering, could, going forward, because it already passed, but going forward, can, can we maybe, you know, um, do something more for them? Um, like meaning, I don't know where it could be perhaps done in school or during school hours or maybe someone from the board or it should, to me, should just be recognized more. And the reason why I say that, on the night my son was committed to the school, he was, him and two other um, young men, I mean, it was like the group of his friends that were there and then the parents only. And I just think this is a very good thing, great thing, because to my understanding, this is one of the biggest years, if not the biggest year, that we had that many, you know, football players to get, you know, committed to colleges. And I just think we should yeah. just make a bigger deal about it. So May, I think May 1st is College Decision Day. Um, so it's not just for football players, I but for, for all the kids. Yes. Um, I think we could do a better job with our athletes in terms of, um, of recognizing it, but I don't know how we would do that because each college does a different day and, um, you know, the different subset. But I'll talk to Mr. Palin to see what we could do better because, you know, no matter how good we are today, we can always be better yes. tomorrow. Um, but college decision, I invite you to come and, and watch the kids in their jerseys. That's a fantastic day. Well, I'm every for child. the invitation for that, of course. I am. You can but come. Yes. But it's a great day. Even the teachers get involved in it. They wear their college jerseys. But the kids, and they take pictures, and we're tweeting, and we're on social media with it. So it's, it's not just for athletes, but for all students in their decision, if they're going to work. You know, whatever, the, it's a decision day. Okay. So whatever they're deciding, it's a big event. I know the high, the high school turns it out. So... Right. Um, but in terms of um, the commitment to colleges, I, I, you know, I've been in many districts. I don't know how you would organize it as one thing because every college comes at a different day and makes its announcements at a different Well, day. committed day was like um, where they actually sign, you know, say, for example, that night they signed to say it was. Right, but they're different days for different. Well, it it's was. Not just it one. is. Yes, I, get, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but we'll but think I, about it. Right. That's, that's all I'm asking, that it does, you know, Williams graduating, and things I'm saying tonight, of course, is like you're saying, hoping it'll get better years to come. And I, I, I just want to say this one quick thing. The two uh, young people that were here tonight was very, they were awesome. I just wanted to say that. They really was awesome, very well-spoken young people. And, and that is something that um, I hope you guys will continue to do as well. That was very nice of them. Um, so are you coming on May 20th? 
I'm sorry? Are you coming to the strategic planning I, session? I wrote it down. I wrote Fabulous. it down. Fabulous. Fabulous. We emails. need you. We need you. Your emails are awesome. I got to just say, you you look, you know, I don't know. I'm leaving. <laughs> but really, Dr. Lewis, me and your relationship. A long <laughs> way, Mrs. Harley. We have, we have come a long, a long way. way. So it was growth between <laughs> both of us. We both I'll did. I'll be the first yes. to admit that. <laughs> right, Dr. Dr. We Romano, did. but yeah. I'll be the first to admit that. Like, yeah. we've both grown, and, we and it's all good stuff. <laughs> and this is why we're here, not to bash each other, but to come together and put ideas out there and see what's going to be the best for, for our kids. And that's what it comes down to. And I just wanted to say that tonight. And I'm, I just really wish, I don't know how we can do this to get people, you know, more people to come out to support, say, not just football and basketball, but even just to hear these young people speak. I mean, you go out there, I was out there today walking, and at the lacrosse game, you maybe had six parents out there. I don't know, maybe we can do some, even, even if we get the students to come out, maybe we can offer them some type of points or something to encourage them to come out to the games. It just means so much when you see faces out there and people yelling. So I just want to say that, that maybe just something we can do to make people come out more. Because it was today, I mean, I stood there, we were out there to walk, but me and my girlfriend who I was walking with just stood there just to watch some of the game. Because when I tell you, it was hardly any parents out there, you know? Or even students for that matter. So again, I want to say thank you. I'll still be back. And um, this is not my last meeting, but I will say my orange and blue is going to have to go in, you know, away. Thank you so but much for your thank you. Where's he going? Thank you. Where's he going to school? He's going to Mannersville. It's like four hours away. <clears throat> Did I say four hours away? <laughs> so it's going to be a Let him go. Time. Let him go. So you guys are going to see me a lot more than you think. But, of course, when William has a game, that's, that's where I'll be. But, um, again, this is my home, and I'm an alumni as well, and I'll continue to come back and support Malvern. Thank you. This is Harley. That was way over five minutes, Mrs. Hartley. I just want you to know. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Sandy Ronquillo, 59 Madison Street, Limbrook. Um, so at the la uh, last, one of last month's uh, Board of Education meeting, I asked whether, I asked online whether middle school students would be attending any grade level field trips. Um, Dr. Romano read a list of several field trips of which I believe only one has actually occurred, mock trial. Um, although that is not a grade wide field trip, I do applaud that experience for that select group of students. Uh, part of the response to my question implied that I should speak to Mr. Nelson regarding this issue, and although um, myself and the PTA have been in communication and we also have a pending meeting with him, um, we still have yet to accomplish grade level field trips for our middle school students. Uh, seeing this need for field experiences for HDH students, I'd like to set the record straight to reflect that HTH PTA has done the legwork to facilitate an evening family social outing to watch the Outsiders musical on Broadway next Friday, April 19th. Since this is a book that most students read in seventh grade, HTH PTA jumped at the chance to facilitate this experience for our middle school kiddos. Uh, we sold 65 tickets to students and their families and although we are very excited for this event, this does not replace a school-sponsored field trip or experience. Uh, my current seventh grader has not attended a field trip since he was in third grade. And my current second grader's first field trip this school year will occur finally next week. And although it may be too late for this school year, um, I, would like, I would love to propose that every grade from kindergarten to eighth attend one to two trips per school year. I'd like to see each grade have a signature trip that all families and students can look forward to. For example, the kindergarten trip to visit the firehouse is one that we all can rely on and get excited about and prepare the kids for. So can we do this for all the other grades as well? Perhaps each grade level teacher team uh, can brainstorm one to two trips they're willing to embark on each year. 
uh, let's start planning now so that maybe we can make it happen for next school year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else in the audience? There we go. <laughs> uh, first, I want to say good evening, everybody. Some familiar faces. Good evening, Dr. Lewis. Good evening, Dr. Romano. Good evening, Nicole. Uh, my name is Latea Carter. I live at 461 Marianne Lane in Lakeview. I am a 2001 alumni. Very happy to be back. My children are in Davison and Downing, and I'm, we're all excited to be here. Uh, I have one small question, and it was in relation to the budget on May 21st. So if the budget fails, I just need a little bit of clarity in reference to what the contingency plan is in regards to the tax levy. Good evening. Should the budget fail in May, um, the district could um, do three things. It could first go out for a second vote in June at the same tax levy. The second choice would be to go out a, uh, come in with a lower tax levy increase, so less than 2%. Or if the budget did fail in May, the board could choose as a third option to go directly to a contingent vote and not have a second vote in June. A contingent vote would require a zero per New York State law, a 0% tax levy increase. So that would equate to about $950,000 that would have to be reduced from the proposed budget. Okay, when you say a 0% zero, a zero tax increase, what does that mean? The, the annual levy is, um, not the exact number, but it's about $47 million. I believe um, that the total number cannot go up if it's a 0% levy increase. So right now the proposed levy, the proposed tax levy for next school year is going up about $950,000. So it, if the budget were to fail, or if it were to fail in May and then a, another vote in June failed again, same thing, that would be beyond what's called a contingent budget. So a contingent, bunch, a contingent budget under New York State law, we cannot increase the total tax levy on the community. So we, that equates to about $950,000. So we would have to take, remove $950,000 of spending out of the proposed budget for next school year. Okay, thank you. That was all. I, I, I wanna say to you that Newsday published a list of tax levy increases for Nassau and Suffolk County. And we are, we are below Lowest. average. And you know there are some, there are even some districts that are piercing the cap. There are districts that are above the two and are laying off teachers. I can, you know, you've seen it in the news. We have Amityville, they're cutting 4.5 million dollars. There's Riverhead, there's Sachem, there's Hicksville, uh, West Hampstead. They're cutting staff. We have put a budget together that maintains our staffing and maintains program. And it's a modest increase, as, as small as we could, a 2% tax levy increase. Mm -hmm. That's at, that's, um, we're one of the smallest tax levy increases. Because we know, uh, we look at the, uh, the community's ability to pay. And right. that's very important to us. But we've yeah. maintained our staffing um, by the budget that we put together. Should we go to contingency? In order to cut over $900,000, it means staffing. There's no way to meet a $950,000 um, cut without cutting staff, and what that means is class sizes or programs and that sort of thing. That's not what we want. That's why we s put our budgets together so that we could maintain our program and keep the trajectory or the momentum of, of learning going. I completely agree with that. I love the class sizes. I actually was just, um, I relocated to Queens for 22 years. So <laughs> the class sizes out there are double of what are out here. So I can really appreciate that. So I understand. Thank you again. Anybody else in the audience? Do we have any online questions? Uh, yes, we do. 
We have uh, Diana Bucci, who resides at 12 Kathy Court in Malvern. Uh, she has a series of questions. The first one uh, is, why are there never updates done to Downing Building? There are classes on a court, which is unfair. Why are we not using the space where the containers used to be on the field that we paid for since COVID? So I can speak to the containers in the back of uh, Downing. So during COVID, we had to find uh, additional space in the building for the social distancing and uh, temperature scans. So we had um, rented three containers originally for the back of that space. And over the last several years, we were able to reduce those to one container. So we have one container left in the back of that building. The other containers that you see in the back of that building are actually part of a capital project uh, where we're replacing our windows. So of the three, there's only gonna be one remaining. Uh, so I can comment about that. Thank you for the question. Uh, Grades on downing for the last three years. Sure, so as I mentioned just now, we did the windows in the front half of that building, which is why the containers were there as of this year. Uh, prior to that, we did the roof over the back section of Maurice W. Downing. So we've, been, we've allocated um, you know, millions of dollars at this point to try to upgrade that facility. Uh, I noticed a second question at this uh, particular, sure, and we also did the gym. Uh, we did all the padding in there, we redid the floor. Uh, the ceiling, we had issues with the ceiling, so we had repainted that. Uh, so we, again, we redid doors, as you mentioned uh, early in the PowerPoint presentation about completing that project. We did about 75% uh, of that building upgraded with interior doors. Uh, so we are taking a hard look and trying to continue to maintain those facilities the best we can. Uh, Dr. Lewis also added air conditioners to each of it, uh, classroom prior to Memorial Day two years ago. So that was also part of what upgrades we did. Yeah. Uh, with Downing being the youngest of our children, there needs to be better support, uh, particularly in the area of having a dedicated assistant principal. That is money that we don't have right now. But we do have a, uh, a shared assistant principal. Uh, also, there's a, a lot of conversation amongst the parents that there needs to be a major security guard upgrade at Downing. Security crimes, guard up there? Security guard, yes. The guard upgrade? Security okay. guards. So, so this school year, we added a security guard at Downing. So we used to have one. So actually, in prior years, we didn't have any security guards at Downing. And then when we received COVID funding, we were able to add one. Uh, two years ago, we were able to second one. And now we actually have a half. So we went from zero to two and a half security guards within the last three years at Downing. Um, but if I encourage anybody with safety issues in the district that bring this to our attention, please reach out to my office. Uh, I'd love to have a conversation with you if you see things that I'm not seeing or somebody else in the district isn't seeing. Uh, I'd be happy to facilitate a conversation with regard to safety in that building. So thank you again. Concludes the questions online. Okay, so at this point we will end the public uh, discussion. And um, we have dates to remember. Uh, so April 10th, which is tomorrow, schools will be closed in um, recognition of Eid for anyone who celebrates. Uh, I hope you have a nice day. April 11th is our voter registration from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. in the Malvern High School lobby and from 11.30 to 3.30 in the admin building. Uh, April 16th, we will have our BOCES budget vote at 5 p.m. From April 22nd to the 30th, we will be closed for spring recess. From May 10th, we have our second voter registration from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the admin building. Uh, May 14th is our next um, Board of Education and Budget hearing, 8 o'clock here in MPAC. May 21st, we will have our district budget vote and election for trustee. From 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., that will be in the HTH Gymnasium. We will be celebrating uh, students' artwork from um, Downing all the way up to the high school starting at um, 6 p.m., and that will be at here in the high, high school. 
not in the middle school, correct? That was an error in here? It's at the high school, the art celebration. They put HTH. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that, is, that will be here at the high school gym. Uh, we also have the science symposium, um, and that's at 7 o'clock. Um, May 22nd, our, the Malvern High School Band and String Concert will be in here at 8 p.m. We will be closed May 27th for Memorial Day. May 29th, we have the Malvern High School Chorus Concert, 8 p.m. in the MPAC. May 30th, Davison Avenue, their fourth grade spring concert will be at 6.15. Uh, do we have a location on that to Davison? Is that in the auditorium? That will be here. That will also be in the MPAC. And May 31st to June 3rd, our select choir will be uh, going to the Bush Gardens competition. We wish them the best of luck. Anything else that I should be bringing to I, I don't know officially, but I think Winter Guard. Um, yes, play second. Play second this congratulations, weekend. So congratulations. Congratulations yes. to them. And, um, uh, you know, we just adopted a budget. And I just want to say thank you to the board for the process. It's been um, a pleasure walking you through it. So it's now officially your budget. But also, shame on the governors and shame on the legislators that we are adopting a budget blindly because we have not received the actual state aid allocations. And she's holding fast to that um, idea of um, the, the smoothing of the um, cost of living increases. So it doesn't look good for us, but nevertheless, we've adopted the budget. I'd also like to congratulate our financial department and our, our staff and central administration. Um, I do a lot of work with the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association, and so I, I hear a lot about what's going on in the other districts. And because you guys have done such a fantastic job um, and planning for the future, we're able to sort of ride the ups and downs of this without drastic changes to our programs. Other schools have not been as careful and, and they are, are ha struggling to, to make things work right now. So the fact that our district is weathering this so well um, is really a tribute to the work that not just done this year, but that has been done for years and years. Uh, the school is in a very good financial position. Um, I know the audit reports are usually pretty boring, but if you listen to them, they are very good reports. And, uh, and that is why we're, we're able to do um, what we're doing this year, despite the uh, uncertainty of the school foundation aid. Congratulations on being elected to the Nassau Suffolk School Boards. As the treasurer and, and secretary, we just love that you will represent us so well at that level. I just want to wish the uh, Malvin High School Band a great time. They're going to Disney and they will be performing um, in the Main Street Parade um, during the Passover break. So I hope they have a, a safe and happy and fun trip. Um, if there is nothing else, could I please get a motion to adjourn our meeting? Second, please. All in favor? Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.